French painter James Tissot led a strangely eventful life. It was common in the late 19th century for letters and personal documents to be destroyed after a person's death to protect their reputation. But what's also intriguing is that while Tissot was a wealthy and well-known figure in Paris, there are so few accounts of him in other people's journals and letters. By 1870, at age 34, James Tissot had become a multi-millionaire celebrity with an opulent new home and studio among aristocratic neighbors near the Arc de Triomphe. He was handsome and charming, and his friends included the painters James Whistler, Edgar Degas, Edouard Manet, the Dutchman Lawrence Tadema, who later restyled himself Lawrence Elmet Tadema, and in London, the pre-Raphaelite John Everett Millay. Tissot's elegant studio was decorated in the chic new Japanese style, and all the princes and princesses visited him there, as well as crowds of people who streamed through to see his art and his posh decor. He was described as a bit pretentious, but then his parents were merchants in the clothing trade on the coast, and he had made it to the top in Paris on his own. When the Prussians attacked Paris that year, 1870, James Tissot became a sharpshooter in the artist's brigade defending the capital. But after a bloody civil rebellion fought virtually at the doorstep of his mansion, Tissot fled to London, where he was viewed with suspicion. There was no going back to his pre-war prominence in Paris. If he wanted to survive in the British establishment's art market, he had to decide whether to make it on their terms or his own. His friend Jimmy Whistler had moved to London long before the war, and he was a laughingstock there. But Tissot was shrewd, and his career skyrocketed for a second time, from 1871 to 1879. And again, he became a multimillionaire. When his dear friend Edgar Degas invited him to join struggling artists in Paris in what would later become known as the First Impressionist exhibit, Tissot declined. They needed him more than he needed them. He was proud of his work, and he knew how to incorporate trends to keep up with the times. But his friends Degas and Manet in Paris, and even his defiant friend Jimmy Whistler in London, were redefining art entirely, turning the corner to modern art. James Tissot marched to his own drummer on a path that led to relative obscurity so that people now may not even know his name, though they love his beautiful paintings. <laughs>